If you want to do the best damage possible, you need to be able to master a complex rotation. This is one of the features that attracts players to the Feral spec. Welcome to the How To Feral DPS Guide. I'm Peril Larson, or Cold Bear, on US Revenant Alliance in the Guild Renaissance. I've played 5 Feral Druids to Endgame, rated since MC and BWL back on Laughing Skull, and also made a few movies. Some information in this video will be obsolete with new patches, but you will see simple terms at the bottom that you can Google for up-to-date information. For example, if you're looking for a Feral PvP guide, Google Starmist PvP. The basic Feral DPS spec is 05516, but you can choose to do some passive healing, increase your survivability, do about 1% more single target, or 30% more cleave damage. Feral aggression generally affects about a 20th or less of your single target damage, so max this out if your guild is stuck on a single target aggression fight for 1% more damage, otherwise go for Feral Instinct, which increases swipe damage by 30%. Survival Instincts is a cost-effective way to occasionally make up for a mistake or help out your healers. Feral Charge is a huge amount of mobility. You might laugh, but I've seen Feral DPSers without it. Nurturing Instinct makes little difference for PvE raiding. Improved Leader of the Pack is useless if there's another Feral in the raid with that talent. My last point is in Infected Wounds for the few times that Frost Fever or Thunder Clamp drops off the boss, but it's not necessary unless you raid without an Arms or Prop Warrior or Unholy Frost DK or Prop Power. For max DPS, this point should be in Feral Aggression. The tooltip on Protector of the Pack is misleading. The AP bonus is bear only. Control! Control! You must run control! For further information and discussion on specs, see Elitist Jerks in the official forums. Your major glyphs should be SR, Rip, and Shred. Any other combination will give inferior PvE DPS results. The proof is in Roar and the Feral by Night thread on the latest jerks. Feel free to argue with them. Minor glyphs don't really matter, but more dash is more better IMO. It is possible to play a melee DPS spec by using your keyboard to turn and the mouse to click skills, but it is not possible to do this efficiently. If you're a keyboard turning clicker and want to learn how to do things faster and better, play a first person shooter game for a while. Any first person shooter. It's also possible to play while with a start mouse that came with your computer, but it's inefficient, slow, and getting a good mouse can dramatically improve your gameplay for less than 100 bucks. I used the Logitech MX Revolution for a lot of years, really like the Microsoft Sidewinder, and I'm currently learning the Razer Naga and digging it so far. Who the fuck is this Autobot? Bind your most used abilities to the mouse buttons available. For example, I have my video recording on off, focus target, target switch, and auto run bound to mouse keys, with my quest, FFF, and SR macro bound so I can trip it with the inside of my index finger. There is no rotation. Fuck me. The risks have a very priority algorithm. The first lines are always more important, i.e. Mangle is more important than SR, which is more important than Rake, which is more important than Shred. If you have three or more targets in range in front of you and it doesn't matter which dies first, use Mangle to keep up SR and use Swipe Cat whether it's talented or not. If you have two targets and it doesn't matter which will die first, pick the one that will last the longest and proceed with single target DPS. 2. Keep up FFF unless you have a Boomkin who puts up IFF in the first second or two and keeps it up. 3. Keep Mangle up. 4. Keep SR up. You want 100% uptime. 5. Keep Rake up. 6. Shred. 7. Get 5 combo points, then rip, unless rip is already up, in which case pool energy and weight. 8. If less than 30 energy, then Tiger's Fury. 9. If clear casting procs, then shred, unless Mangle or SR is about to run out. 10. If you have 5 CP and there's 8 seconds or more left on both SR and rip, then and only then for the fight. 11. Anticipate if SR and RIP will run out concurrently, and clip SR to desynchronize the timers with a low combo point SR ASAP. 12. Berserk as early and as often as possible unless A. Save it to take advantage of a boss mechanic. B. Try to stack with cooldowns like Hysteria or Shattering Throw. C. Try not to Berserk within 6 seconds after Tiger's Fury, except for the first one nor at low energy and not at above 85 energy. What are the implications of this algorithm? First, ferals require a substantial ramp up time before the damage really gets going, averaging approximately 5.5 seconds in melee range to get Mangle, SR, Rake, and Rip up. You want to draw your raid leader's attention to this if needed, so you don't end up switching targets more than necessary, especially at low energy. Second, no other spec currently in the game needs to be behind this target to do competitive PvE damage. If you are the only feral DPS, then the raid may be better off positioning to your disadvantage, but if maximum your DPS becomes an issue, the raid may have to accommodate this unique positioning requirement. Keep in mind that most raid leaders are stressed, don't know everything about every class, rarely have perfect raid comps, and face a lot of competing priorities. Work with them, and they might possibly work with you. Work against them, and, well, you have fun with that. Crush him! What the fuck?! Third, you will not always be able to remember every step in the algorithm, but in the next section you will find solutions to this massive headache. 
As you can see, it is possible to play as Feral DPS using only the stock UI. It's just insanely, stupidly difficult to do so effectively. Feral DPS players have to keep track of combo points, energy, your health, the boss's health, who's low on mana, who's dead, FFF, SR, Mangle, Rake, Rip, Clearcast, TF, Berserk. And that's on top of cooldowns, moving out of void zones, not pulling aggro, attacking the right target, ads, listening to calls over vent, making sure you're behind the boss, running out, running in, etc, etc, John fucking Madden. Blizzard failed you. What you need is a more effective, more efficient way to display all this information. Bad Kitty will help you keep track of buffs and debuffs, treats an Orms Warrior's trauma debuff as equivalent to your mangle, and keeps track of how many shreds you have left to extend each rip. Druid Focus also does this, has tons of audio-visual options, and keeps track of most everything else you need to know as a Feral. Other buff debuff trackers like Need to Know, Alcanos, Oracle, Power Auras, Dot Timer, and Class Timer will also do the trick. The Feral by Night add-on will keep track of the needed buffs and debuffs, count how many times you've shredded each rib, out of three possible, help you learn the DPS priority algorithm, and advise you on what to do when. Aw oh, shit! What's up, you motherfucker? Don't mess with the waitings unless you really know what you're doing, though. There is also a Feral by Night simulator in development, but as of October 2009, it doesn't have a fully developed user interface yet. For sure! Eventually, you will come to disregard many of the spell recommendations due to the nature of each specific fight, but it's a vast improvement over the stock UI or trying to follow a memorized 11 line algorithm in a hectic and extremely dynamic environment. You will get information overload and not benefit your raid as much as you could if you don't learn this. My add-on choices are as lightweight as possible since my computer ain't all that and I like to record video and audio while playing. I use FPM, mood anything, minimalist, grid and cooldowns to keep things simple, lightweight, low maintenance and effective. Australian, the author of Roar, prefers inventorizing, editing the config to show 1.5 seconds of the past, 18 seconds of the future and setting the width to 250. If you want something really cool looking, you can try the Forte Exorcist add-ons. My add-on website of choice is wildairface.com, though some authors only have their add-ons listed on curse.com, which likes to push software clients on you. Register on these two websites, find the add-ons you need, put them in your favorites list, and enable email notification of updates. There is no need to use automatic installers that also use your WoW account and computer to gather information. Add-on authors also sometimes don't receive any benefits from advertising or donations via automatic installers. What gear should I use and in what combination? Short answer, use Roar, SimCraft, FBN, or Tosks to figure out easy upgrades and what should stay in the bank. Why? I don't want to do that. I want a list of gear that will always improve me. Stop whining! Roar, FBN, and SimCraft aren't perfect, but using them is the only easy way to evaluate new gear that may or may not be an upgrade in some combination with other gear that you already have in the bank. Roar is a tool to help optimize the performance of your character in World of Warcraft. It's designed to be fun and easy to use, and will help you find the best gear available to you, correctly gem and and enchant it, see the potential value of upgrades, and much, much more. A good place to start is loading your character from the armory. The best in slot cat idol is Idol of Mutilation, which is currently stupidly easy to get. Just run the daily heroic and anything that drops triumph badges. If you were around when IQQ and Magister's Terrors launched, you'll see a pattern here. 5 and 10 person instances released late in an expansion cycle have disproportionately good gear. Your standard raiding flask is Endless Rage, and food should either be Agility or Arpen in accordance with Tosk, Roar, or FBM. The difference is likely to be just a few DPS points, so don't worry too much about it. Fish feasts are nice, but not optimal, so for hard mode and progression fights, you need to be ready with the easily available better food if you want to do your best. On a progression fight, you might use two potions of speed per serious attempt, one right before going into combat, and one during any burst DPS availability, like Hysteria, Shattering Throw, or Increased Damage Boss Mechanic. Head, revered with the Knights of the Ebon Blade. Shoulder, exalted with the Sons of Bordier unless you have Inscription. Back, 22 Agility unless you have Engineering or Tailoring. Chest, 10 Stats. Wrist, 50 AP unless you have Leatherworking. Feet, Ice Walker unless you have Engineering. Legs, Ice Scale Leg Armor unless you have Leatherworking. Hands, 20 Agility unless you have Engineering. Weapon, Mongoose unless you have Extremely Good Gear and Simcraft, Tosk, Roar, FBN tells you otherwise, or you desperately want a minor increase from the expensive Berserking Enchant. Again, your other gear will determine the value of Mongoose versus Berserking, or even Executioner, at very high RPN levels. For me, the difference is only 5 to 10 DPS, and I'm cheap. Check Roar, Tosk, and FBM. Epic RPN gems, epic agility, or AGI crit gems. One day of running daily quests should net you enough to buy two epic gems, so no excuses. Your helm should always contain a relentless Earth Siege diamond. For min max rating, you'd want to have a blacksmith jewel crafting combo. Other professions might be more fun or cheaper, though. I like to have fun and I'm lazy, so I'll stick to engineering, but we'll drop mining when I'm not too busy making this damn video. 